it should be up. There we go. Well, thank you guys. Uh, Pete Reynolds with Insight Software, uh, joined with uh, Brian Basden and Dara Schwartz. Uh, we're gonna present our Insight Software solution providing easier reporting uh, for users of different ERPs, specifically Sage and SysPro today. Um, we're working with your reseller, Positive Vision, who's helped put this together for us. Uh, thank you for that, Bob. You're uh, welcome. Uh, go to the next slide, Brian. We're gonna go through a couple of PowerPoint slides just to kind of help level set, but we're gonna spend the majority of the time uh, working with you guys uh, presenting the, pr the solution itself so you guys understand the real value. Uh, today's, uh, today's session is being recorded uh, and we'll give you an opportunity to ask questions as, as we proceed through the webinar. Uh, please use the, the questions box as part of that or the chat box as part of our, our presentation today to put your questions into and, and don't wait till the end to do that. Go ahead and put them in as you have them. Um, and if we can, we can uh, help address those as we move through the presentation. Uh, if we reach the end of the presentation and we haven't addressed your question, we'll make sure to, to reach out through um, Bob and, and connect with you guys to provide uh, that answer. Thank you, Brian. The next. Uh, next slide, there we go. Uh, so as a quick introduction, uh, uh, Brian Basden is our technical solution engineer. He'll be presenting our solutions today. Uh, and Dara Schwartz, our fabulous account manager, is gonna work with you guys to help provide additional information uh, with Bob as you guys uh, request, uh, whether it's pricing or just functionality or user types, all that fun, exciting stuff that comes after these, we'll work together to provide that. Um, we'll demonstrate how to provide easier reporting as we move through the presentation and how to help uh, users access information, not just the report writers, but the actual people using information in the business today. Next. Okay, so that's the team of three and you see us seeing us on the cameras now. So one of the things you guys are gonna find uh, working with Insight Software, we work with close to 25 different 25,000 different organizations worldwide. Uh, so it's a large organization helping support uh, you guys' organizations, whether you guys are a multinational or, or just a, a great US organization uh, looking for better reporting, we're able to help that. Uh, we've got more than 11 offices worldwide to support a global use of our product. Next. All right. With that, so one of the things we face persistently with our cloud users, excuse me, with our users today is trying to pull in data. Uh, you know, we've got systems that are pulling from, you know, whether it's a CRM system, an e-commerce system, or your ERP system. A lot of times we've got data kind of scattered amount the organization. In a perfect world, we would get all of our information under one ERP. In an imperfect world, we're using multiple solutions today to do that, right? Uh, so one of the things we bring to the table is the ability to not only uh, help provide better reporting, you know, for your Sage or your, your SysPro implementations, but we can also connect to other data solutions as well, uh, helping support uh, the entire organization. The other piece of it, of course, is a lot of the users we work with today spend a lot of time in Excel, and so we're constantly exporting and re-exporting data each time we need to update that data, right, which makes it difficult to maintain the correct information. Uh, we want to make sure we have a single source that you guys are reading from, uh, and have information that's not misleading. The beauty of that, um, when we look at our solutions, is we're gonna use Excel to do that, something we all understand or use today, many of us in our business world. Next. And that's, you know, the slide we always include, and I always think it's interesting, more than 1 billion users of Microsoft worldwide. Um, I'm definitely, a, a, and, and Brian and I definitely spend a lot of time in Excel. I imagine you guys on the call do as well. Um, what we find is almost 80% of the organizations we've worked with um, still are taking that data, even with the, the newest versions of, you know, the you know, SysPro or Sage, they're still taking and pushing that data out to Excel today. Um, so we're going to offer a solution that allows you to leverage your Excel skill sets, but provide real-time reporting. Next. All right. So that new reporting reality is the ability to, to give that end user uh, real-time access to information, especially as, as most of us are now still working remotely. Um, we now have the ability to, to take and use Excel, something we already understand, provide that uh, information to an end user that can connect to it and work the what-if scenarios, even when they're remote workers. Um, and we can do that against uh, multiple data points, right? 
it's a, a pretty powerful solution that allows you to do all of that with your basic Excel skill sets, right? I don't have to be a power user. I don't have to write macros and all that kind of fun, exciting stuff that the power users in Excel do. But for the rest of us, um, we just want to copy and paste and do sums. That's probably the most complex thing you're doing in Excel with our solutions. Next. All right, so when we talk about some of the reports, you know, we see more critical than ever is that rolling cash flow, cash cycle, paging enable, and, and aging. A lot of the solutions that you've seen today or you work with or, or might have seen is, is a lot of it's financial only focused. Uh, in our solutions, we give you the ability, of course, to work with uh, the general ledger data uh, out of the box. And we also provide operational connectivity as well. So now it's not just GL, it's also the AP and AR so that we can take a full look at that cash cycle. Uh, and I know Brian and I over the last few months have you know, been presenting different versions of this uh, webinar today. But that focus, of course, is, is gone from not just doing it monthly to even doing it weekly, right? Uh, so giving you that flexibility to do that uh, in a single solution. Uh, next. All right. The other piece of that, of course, is the ability to, to trust the information you're working with. So when um, I've got 20 different people working with Excel reports, it's always, well, which version are you working with? We get away from that, right? Because now the report is directly connected to your ERP data or the database, if it's a CRM database, for example, as well. So I don't have to worry about what version you're looking at. Um, all of our reports pull from that same data solution, right? Even working remotely which is super powerful because that's, that's a difficult thing to do in today's world, right? Um, we're providing that, giving you the ability to share reports, all of us connecting to a single data source and doing it in Excel, something we already understand. Awesome, next. So we talk about uh, SysPro and, and, and Sage. Uh, we've got pre-built connectivity to, the, to both Sage and SysPro, so out of the box reporting. Um, for us, you know, we don't talk about the implementations of our solutions. We really talk about an install. Uh, a typical install for us could be less than an hour. Uh, and we live between that, that direct ERP database that you're putting and capturing data in and Excel. Uh, what's powerful is all that out of the box connectivity has already been pre-built for Sage users and for SysPro users, which means uh, as an end user, you know, we're not looking at weeks and weeks to do an install. Literally the install is an hour. Uh, for most of our users, and we provide some out-of-the-box reports to help you get started, right? So nothing uh, screams pain point when I install a, a brand new reporting solution and I'm looking at a blank white screen, now what do I do? <laughs> That's always a painful point. Where do I get started? We give you the out-of-the-box reports to get started, uh, but even more importantly, if you're using Excel today in any part of the reporting piece of it, we can actually leverage those Excel documents as well to get started, right? Thanks, Brian. Let's go to the next one. Right, so Spreadsheet Server, if you guys hadn't picked up on it, it's an Excel-based reporting solution. We give you real-time connectivity and the ability to automatically distribute those reports out to the, in the end users. Uh, we also talked about that pre-built content specifically for Sage uh, and the SysPro users uh, that we hope you guys uh, are using one of those products today. We connect to more than 140 ERPs actually. Um, and that continues to grow as every day we, we sell uh, our products. We've got new users bringing us new ERP systems they want to connect to. Uh, so why Spreadsheet Server? It's because you start in Excel, you stay in Excel, and I don't have to learn a completely new solution, right? So that's important that from a re return on the investment, if we can install it in an hour and a casual user can pick it up and begin using it right away. Uh, the end users, someone who's just opening a report and, and really making use and refreshing data and drilling down, doesn't require any training. Literally watch a quick recording and you could do it. Uh, the report writers take a little bit more. Well, we typically recommend um, a minimum of four hours, but again, not terribly difficult and not complex. And Brian will give you a great view of that today. So let's uh, uh, jump over to the next slide, Brian. I think we should be um, well, we'll pause here. This is a good point to let uh, Brian jump in and, and show how exciting you can you can get playing in Excel with real-time data connections. Yep. Sure thing. One second. I'll switch screens. Okay. And Pete, can you just confirm that you can hear me okay and that you see an Excel spreadsheet? All right. I'll give it a big thumbs up. 
Great. So what I'm going to start off with is a pre-developed report, which can be used. Uh, this connects to SysPro data. I'll show how it works, but I just want to go straight into what Spreadsheet Server is. You'll notice it's an Excel add-in, gives you a ribbon at the top. You can see I have a pre-built report. I am dynamically linked live to my data. So when I show a change in time period, it changes my data that quickly. So I have special formulas. Not only can I change time periods linking to my live data, I can drill down very quickly a couple of different ways. So the number that I'm drilling into, I can uh, see what makes up that number in a pop-out modal type view. I can look at this as something almost like a pivot table. If I want to rearrange, um, export that, add subtotals, things like that. Uh, I can also drill down here. But if I don't like things in a pop-up window, you know, we see about 50% of our users like that, but about 50% of our users also like to have everything in a tab, which is also fine. So I can get that same exact data that I'm drilling down into in a worksheet. These are static numbers, so I can use charts, graphs, visualizations, pivot tables, real life data, of course. You know, I might have hundreds of rows if I'm drilling into something, but it makes it really easy to find what I'm looking for. You'll notice this is created with a special formula. These formulas are created by Spreadsheet Server, but it's not new syntax that you have to learn. There is a GUI, a formula builder, that you can click on that shows exactly how that's built. So it's from SysPro data. We have a type group and account as our segments. I'll show you behind the scenes how that works too, but I wanna make sure that, uh, that we cover some of the, the high level features. So if we look at you know, current month, actual and prior year budget, comparisons, variances, percentages, things like that, all our visualizations, all the regular Excel features and functionality still work. So you just have these formulas. I'll show you how they're built and what they refer to um, separately, as well as how easy it is to create a new one. But all of this information um, is live and it's not locked down. So I'm not limited to certain types of tables, certain types of uh, formulas. I can use sums, lookups, things like that, uh, whatever I want. And like I said, when you change your data, sorry, when you change your time period, it changes your data that quickly. Um, that's connecting directly to SysPro. And we have tons of other examples of other systems that we connect to as well. Um, Pete, anything that you wanna add at this point before I go into how they're built? No, and one of the things that's important, and, and we, we drilled down in, in the example we have today, and, and you'll have to bear with us, we have a demo database, so it's not a lot of transactional detail. When Brian was drilling down to sales, we were drilling down to that, that balance detail, um, but we can go down to that transaction or that journal entry detail as well. But what's unique about Spreadsheet Server in our platform for our Sage and SysPro users is imagine if I drilled down to the general ledger, uh, like revenue, I could then go from there to AR. Um, I, I can drill from the report and I'm not limited to just general ledger. From inside that drill down, I could also drill across or drill down to the sub ledger, which is important, right? So imagine giving your end user the ability to open a report remotely, bring in live data, they trust it. When they have questions, interrogate the data, and when they have additional questions, even go across module, across sub-ledgers to get that detail directly from a single report. And that's really cool, because generally in my life, I start in the report and I end up back in the ERP system trying to dig into different screens to figure out what happened in my business. Here, we're serving that up directly to you, to the end user in a single report. Yep, and I'm staying in Excel. Um, just to show how easy it is to create these uh, formulas from scratch with the formula builder. Um, so pulling from SysPro, right? Uh, if I'm gonna look at a time period that I know I have data from in my demo database, right? Um, I can you know, change if I wanna look at uh, period, year to date, life to date, et cetera. I can tell what I want to see and when. And for account, Go ahead and show the, the drop down on that, Brian, so that they know they don't have to, they don't have to just know that. We actually give you fields to pop all of that. these. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So you can see where you have a uh, life to date for a balance sheet or ranges or quarter to dates, et cetera. You don't have to guess, just pick what you want, select it. Mm -hmm. And that also applies to the segments, in this case, uh, type group and account. Um, if I wanna see that I'm actually connecting to data and see what I'm uh, pulling, then I have that 
capability. I can use uh, specific account numbers. I can use wildcards. I can use ranges, lists. Uh, it's very, very flexible. But right now I just put in a few account numbers and I'm instantly pulling back data. So it's really just a click of a few buttons and I can create formulas. And on top of that, um, if I want to, you know, fill down, fill across any of the regular Excel functionality, right? I'm going to keep all my years the same here, but uh, notice Excel auto incremented my time periods. So I can get multiple months of data very, very quickly. Uh, the same works for rows. You know, if I have other account numbers uh, or if I want to split to individual account numbers, it is that quick. So all of this is pulling live data. I don't have to do any manual exports. I don't have to do any. Now I'll add the 3002 to 3009. Is very, very flexible. So I can create whatever format I want for reports. Um, I can get as fancy as I want. I can add visualizations. And now I'll show you a little bit about behind the scenes, how this works, where it's getting information. So I've started with one month from some revenue and expense uh, formulas. In Excel, when you double click, you can see what cells are being referenced. You can see here, I'm pulling data from SysPro, what time period, what format I am using, the segments that I'm pulling from. Again, all this is very, very flexible, but you saw that it was kind of automatically being built for me here, uh, just again, with a click of a few buttons. But once I have that created, and you know, let's say I'm gonna make something for printing, and I don't necessarily need to show that on my printed copy, then I can literally go from one month to 12 months of data. And all of that is live data. So that's pulling from my ERP, whatever that latest information is. Um, in terms of distributing or sending out this information, you know, I mentioned um, the printable versions. So Excel, uh, sorry, Spreadsheet Server in Excel also has a component called Distribution Manager. It has a pop-up GUI interface as well. It lets you... Um, decide if you want to email or send out any of those files as usually our two most common formats are Excel and PDF. Uh, PDF, pretty self-explanatory. Um, you can look at that on anything, right? Everything's hard-coded, it's static, portable document format. Excel, however, you have a lot of flexibility there. So we can send something as an Excel sheet. Um, we can decide what tabs or what worksheets we want to send. When we're sending that as an Excel sheet, uh, we can send it to somebody else with a spreadsheet server um, license, and they can open and refresh and work with that data. We can also send it to somebody who does not have a spreadsheet server license, and we can convert either all the formulas to values or just the spreadsheet server formulas to values. So if you look here, regular Excel sum, right? I can use sums, VLOOKUPs, um, you know, sum if, is error, is in a, all of those regular Excel formulas. I can leave those intact if I want. Uh, but when I send this out to somebody, if they don't have the spreadsheet server license, they won't be able to see this data. So that's part of the security aspect. I can still send them this report in Excel, and they don't have to have spreadsheet server um, just to be able to view that. So distribution manager lets me do that on demand or scheduled. And if I want to actually change something and send multiple versions of a report out and only create one version, for example, with this particular report, this is for period three month 2016, I'm sorry, period three year 2016. I can create uh, a 2015 version, a 2017 version, 2018 version, as many versions as I want. I don't have to do that by hand. I don't have to do a copy tab, a save as, a different version, um, you know, copy and paste values, anything like that. I would actually just use distribution manager and I can say for that particular sheet, um, go to cell E9 and change that to 2015. So I'll add that to my list, and that would send a 2015 version of that sheet and a 2016 version. So I can use that if you imagine multiple locations, multiple cost centers, business units, um, divisions, departments, anything that's a cell that you would change. So that can be segments or even things that are not segments. I can say ahead of time what I want that to be before I send that out, and it can distribute all of that for me. So very, very handy, big time saver for a lot of uh, a lot of our customers, again, that can be by email, uh, saving to your local system, to somewhere on the network, to a SharePoint site. Uh, you can print that. We do still have some uh, end users, some customers printing things. 
Um, and again, you know, Excel and PDF are our two most common formats, but there's other possibilities there as well. Um, Pete, before I go into non-general ledger data, is there anything else you wanted to cover? Yes, just to, to highlight, you know, the distribution, the distribution manager piece of it, right? And so, you know, you, as organizations, we make large investments in our ERP to run our businesses. Um, the distribution manager is just a super efficient way to be able to share information with a large number of users, right? Because one of the things that's important when we share this as a, a values only spreadsheet or a spreadsheet where we've converted the, the formulas that we're using to pull data live to, to static, it allows us to share um, with one distribution manager license, I could share a thousand reports with a thousand different users and none of those guys need licenses, right? But now we're able to say, hey, this person needs this business unit, this person needs this department. And you're able to set that report up one time and then auto-generate or distribute those reports as often as required, right? So when I've got a sales team and I've got 40 people on that sales team and I need to send out weekly sales reports, I can share those reports with those individuals. They actually don't have to have a license of spreadsheet server. We're giving them the information they need and only the information they need. So it's a great way to really maximize your investment in your ERP, you know, SysPro and Sage and say, hey, I spent all this time capturing this information. Let me find a quicker, faster, easier, automated way to share that with individuals. And I don't have to teach them on how to, to, to open up an Excel report or a PDF. Um, even, you know, the joke, even the sales guy can open up an Excel document. <laughs> right? yep, absolutely. Which segues perfectly into the discussion on non-general ledger data. So all the general ledger data, I showed you how easy it is at the click of a button to pull that up. Formula Builder creates that for you. These are all our general ledger formulas. Um, you don't need to know anything about databases or queries or tables to be able to create general ledger formulas and pull that data. That works out of the box. Um, however, you can also access things that are not general ledger. So you can access accounts receivable, accounts payable, inventory, orders, customer data, you know, whatever information you have access to in your database. And a quick example of that is if I'm looking at some inventory, it's also dynamic. So we're pulling live data. These uh, unit cost, unit value by salesperson formulas are called queries or EDQ files. It's an Excel data query. Um, this is part of the designer license. So it is a program called Query Designer that's outside of Excel. So it's not just this uh, spreadsheet server plugin, but spreadsheet server uses those queries. As you can see here, that's what's being referred to. So there's just- Let me ask a question, Brian, Go right? Go ahead. So one of the things I think is important is um, with a uh, an organization, might have an IT person or an analyst that, or a friendly partner, reseller partner that wants to help them write a query. Um, any query that's been written by someone else, I'm still able to use as just a standard user, right? So I don't have Absolutely. to understand it. So mm -hmm. I still have access to these, but now the business analyst or someone who understands the data tables can provide that access for me as well. Correct. Um, and I even have this query pulled up on another screen if we have time to show, um, exactly where it comes from and, and uh, how easy it is to create. Pretty pretty straightforward. Um, these queries, as Pete mentioned, someone else can create those, including a business partner, and they can just send you that query. It's really small, it's about the size of an email, less than a megabyte. And that's saved in a network or local folder somewhere. So that file is saved as a query. I refer to that query, I embed it into the spreadsheet. So you'll notice each of these, uses that same formula, right? And I'm pulling information based on a date, in this case, all months, all warehouses this year. So if I change that, I just pulled a new year's worth of data that quickly. I can even do a range of dates. So now I just pulled seven, eight years worth of data. So the information is dynamic and live. I don't have to do any manual exports. I don't have to um, put it into a cube or you know, an OLAP, ODBC type cube, uh, data mining cube. No intermediary, no middleman. This is pulling straight from SysPro or whatever your ERP is. And the spreadsheet server pulls from 
at last count, almost 150 ERPs, I believe, and any um, any standard data source. Um, I would say like SQL Server, Oracle, things like that, even some OLAP, ODBC data sources, a few non-standard ones, um, OData is a possibility, but you don't have to be limited to just the one data source that you're connected to. So if you notice right here, I'm pulling from SysPro data, that doesn't mean I can only pull from SysPro data. I can combine multiple data sources if I want. So if I have actuals in one location and budget somewhere else, I can combine those even onto the same worksheet, onto the same tab. Uh, so when it comes to the queries themselves, again, these are just standard Excel data visualizations. So there's no um, limitations to what you create for charts and graphs. There's no um, you know, extra steps that you have to take. It's literally just creating whatever Excel charts and graphs you already know how to create uh, or just adding whatever you want. So there's, there's no um, limitations for, you know, having data in a certain type of uh, format or table. It's exactly what Excel data would look like. So if these were let values me, in Excel, it would work the same. Let me ask a question, Brian. So when you go to mm -hmm. drill down on, you know, like SKL over there under unit cost, what is that going to show me there? Uh, SKO for unit cost. Like oh, you're, so you're talking the, about um, by salesperson? Uh, C8. Is that by salesperson? Yes. Yes. Sorry. Gotcha. Right. Yep. So if I drill down into uh, the 12951 right here. So this gives me all of the values for that query. So I have year, month, stock code, description, et cetera. I was trying to fit that all in one screen, but there's a lot of data there, which right. is great. Part of the reason, and I'm, I'm glad you asked because if you notice that inventory EDQ is being used both here and here. So for unit cost and unit value, and that allows me to pull in multiple data fields in that query and just show whichever one it is that I want to see. Yeah. So it gives me but quite if, a lot of power. Yeah. In my business, if I've added additional columns or custom columns or I'm looking at it differently, um, how do I change that view? Um, so if somebody creates that query for you and um, that query is embedded just like here uh, in a spreadsheet with a spreadsheet server license, somebody that's creating reports, right? They don't have to create the queries. They don't have to know anything about the database or the queries if the query is already created. Uh, they can just refer to that query. If, like in this query, all the fields were available already, they can pick and choose what fields they want to use and what fields they want to show. So if, if you take the all-in approach and you create a query with, let's see how many were in there. Looks like about 10 or 12 different uh, fields, right? So if you just throw in all the fields, they can pick and choose the one or two fields that they want or they could show a table with all 10 or 12 fields. So it gives total flexibility and control over what information is shown, as opposed to the scenario you just mentioned that you know if somebody in IT went and created a query and it just had one field, that's one query. If you want another query instead of you know cost versus value, that's a different query. So very, okay. very flexible, very powerful. Let's and then spend of course a few all the regular Excel functionality still works on those yeah. query results live. So what does it look like when, because inevitably what I end up seeing is, is at least in our databases, you know, mm -hmm. uh, we've got 30 columns and I'm only using like 17 or 18 of them. I'd like to not have to bring in all the stuff we're not using. Is that where the IT team is going to use the query designer to adjust that? Correct. Um, and I'll show you what that looks like. It's surprisingly easy to use. Um, you do not need to be a database administrator. Uh, you don't really need even, you don't need to know SQL. So if, and, and I'm even just going to start from brand new, but if I was going to create that query, right, I'll call it SysPro. So I create a name for it. I connect to my data. You can see I can connect to a ton of systems already. Uh, you know, most users would only have just one or two, which is fine. And if I want to pull that information in, I've already connected to my data. This is a list of all the tables in SysPro that I can connect to. That's too many to search for, right? So I'm going to look for the particular table that I want, inventory master. I'm going to bring that table in. So it's already brought that table in and, you know, without uh, taking an extra 
long time to pick and choose exactly what fields I want. I'm just going to say, give me all of these fields. Look over on the right. And granted, this is a large number of fields. I wouldn't normally pick this many. But I just want to show you, um, once I bring all those in, I did not have to write any of the SQL. All of that was written for me. Wow. I don't have to do anything with that. Um, in this particular case, for this query, the inventory.edq, it also uses uh, a second table. That one was inventory movements. So partial string matching, very handy when you have a lot of tables in a system like SysPro. Not only did it bring that table in, it added the join for me. Oh, so it's cool. linking stock code to stock code because it knows I'm going to need a join there, and it knows that that's the same field. So that's automatically added for me. Again, I didn't have to know anything about that. And let's just say I want you know just a few fields from here. So I'm going to add those fields, and then I can run it for a single record just to make sure it generates uh, some result without some kind of error. That's fine. As long as I don't get an error, I can save that query as, uh, in this case, inventory.edq. And when I refer to it in my spreadsheet, just like this, then any spreadsheet server Excel user um, can create a report with that query that I've saved. Right. So now and I'm back so to assuming the Excel I picked all the right user. fields is that quick. Sorry, go ahead, yeah, Pete. I'm back, I'm back to the Excel user. I don't have to understand what yep. you did back here. Um, uh, either my business partner or, or my IT, or someone inside the organization can help me um, create a query for new data I'm trying to access, and then I can just build it out like we did this. Okay. Correct. Mm -hmm. And every system is different, but you know, as as long as you know a little bit about what data you're looking for, um, you know, for most ERPs, it's it's very easy to find in their uh, documentation where those fields are. You know, sometimes the, the table names and the field names are kind of cryptic. They're abbreviated and shortened. Um, but the, every every piece of documentation I've seen from all the ERPs, they're, you know, they make it very easy to find what, uh, you know, what data I'm looking for. I just check in there for what that field name is, what that table name is, create the query, and then I can create accounts receivable, uh, accounts payable, inventory, sales, customer data, you know, salespersons. Um, just worked with a business partner earlier in the week that included their salesperson data from their ERP, as well as quota information that was not in their ERP. They used to just manually create that. They had it in a pivot table. So we refer to the pivot table and we put it all in one report. Right. So when I'm doing my forecast or I'm doing my budget, I can still use Excel, right? Correct. Um, but now I'm able to combine that with refresh for live data you're bringing in here mm -hmm. right yep so that works for all the financial information that you would have um, income statement balance sheet statement of cash flows uh, trial balance as well as any other data in that erp um, again you know inventory sales manufacturing distribution um, whatever's in your system okay yep same for uh same for budget we have customers that have budget data in their ERP. We have customers that have budget data outside of their ERP. But either way, you can show it all in Excel um, and work with it. Or if you're doing future cash, uh, future cash flow forecasts, all of your Excel models. You know, the vast majority of companies that I've worked with have future cash flow forecasting, but their ERP doesn't have anything about the future in it, except for you know future payables that are due, um, future payables that they have to pay out and that are due to them and um, you know some uh, you know orders that they place things like that but um, you know it doesn't know what their cash flow is going to be in the future it knows right then and the past so you right. can create the future cash flow in excel and that and that's why we chose excel as the the interface because now i can combine mm -hmm. that that modeling i'm doing with uh, the live data coming through. So, and I didn't lose what I was doing in Excel before. That's important. Absolutely. Right. Uh, typically, uh, I guess what we I've, I've seen in, in, in my business life is um, I'm going to multiple solutions to try to do that and then dumping all to, in Excel to try to aggregate. Now we, we've taken that manual piece out of it, although I still get to do my modeling, right? Don't take my Excel away. <laughs> Correct. Okay, just so we're clear. 
Um, what versions of Excel are we using today? Uh, we thank you. With? And, and I, want to, and I want to mention install because I didn't cover okay. that yet. Fabulous. Um, so for Excel, it's uh, Microsoft Windows Excel 2010 and newer, which goes back about 10 years, maybe a little more. And because uh, their years are not always the exact same as the versions. Um, and it works for both the 32 and 64 bit versions, but we do recommend 64 bit where possible because as you can see, you know, you, you can create some, you know, pretty significant uh, spreadsheets here, uh, workbooks with quite a few formulas in there. And, you know, size wise, they're not very large. Even this particular file is um, 150K. So that's, okay. that's you know, less than um, a quarter of a megabyte. So this spreadsheet itself, there's no data stored in uh, hidden tabs in other, you know, other uh, other worksheets in this file. It, this is all coming from SysPro. So okay. it keeps the files pretty small, but um, performance is better just on 64-bit systems, especially when you're uh, pulling a lot of formulas at once because um, it right. updates each of these formulas every time I change that time period. So could you talk to or, or kind of give us a description of, you know, because, you know, I, I laugh because we're all sitting in different rooms and I don't think any of us are in offices today. Um, <laughs> what it looks like from a remote person that's trying to use this, right? So, you know, typically, you know, uh, I'm having to, to go in through a remote desktops and all kinds of craziness to try to get to, to the data and the ERP when I'm, I'm living out in the, the wild, wild west in the remote world. How do we manage that or what does that look like from an end user perspective? Absolutely, and I will say I've, I've definitely worked with uh, with products in the past that didn't really handle those remote connections uh, too well. And I'm actually going to open a sheet right now. I should be sharing in just a second. So, do you see another Acme Incorporated Income Statement? Okay, um, this particular worksheet that I have is through VPN, so I am connected to a server instead of a local SysPro database that I was running a moment ago, because um, you know when we're all working remotely, it's uh, it's better to demo from a from a local system than a remote system. Uh, this one actually is remote, uh, so any of this data that I want to pull here is coming from a server at our headquarters behind our firewall. So I have to be on VPN for this to work, uh, and it's the same. So still secure. Of, yep, it's still secure. Oh, there you go. Yeah. But I just changed periods from one month to the next, and it's still that fast. So it so, didn't remind. Uh, it didn't re require me to Citrix in and and have a a different version of Excel somewhere else. I'm trying to go through, right? Correct. Okay. Yep. So I'm using my right. version of Excel, my version of spreadsheet server right here, uh, and I'm actually connecting to a totally different system. So this is one database and one system, and that's remote at headquarters. This is the SysPro database on my local system that I'm pulling, you know, live, uh, and I'm doing both at once. So very, very flexible. Uh, it's great for, you know, um, pulling data from multiple sources, which is something that's uh, increasingly common these days, much more so than five, ten years ago. Right. Uh, so in interest of time, I know we we might want to pop back into the PowerPoint. Uh, but before, was there anything else you wanted to make sure we highlighted? Oh, there we go. This is my favorite part. One other thing I wanted to show, since we have enough time, <laughs> right? And and that is uh, the you know trial balance expand collapse. Uh, so typically, when you pull a trial balance, unless you do something with journal entries and retained earnings, uh, you're going to net to zero. But just because I show a zero, doesn't mean I actually got valid data, right? So you notice no hidden rows here, no collapse. I mean, I do have some for you know I'm referring to. Uh, time periods and things, but um, nothing below this. So when I go and pull this information, um, there's a, a feature in uh, Spreadsheet Server for um, expand GL row and collapse GL row, which you should see at the top. So uh, what I'm gonna do is go and hit that. And if I'm on that formula, you should see expanding row at the bottom, inserting data, so now I have all these new rows. So by account, I can see what all of my entries are, beginning balance, debits, credits, ending balance, that net to zero for my trial balance. So if I didn't net to zero, I could pretty easily track down where the issue was. And when I'm done with it, I didn't break anything. I just hit collapse GL row that you saw. Now it's back to normal. But 
you know, I'm not um, having to worry about the fragility of an Excel model or an Excel spreadsheet, which in my past in finance, I've definitely had to worry about that with some of the things that I've created breaking really easily. Right. So go ahead and expand that again, Brian. And oh, uh, I might have yeah. I might have tipped everybody else off when I got excited about looking at a trial balance. I do have an accounting background, so I'm kind of. So the interesting thing that I think is is, is especially, and I didn't even think about this when they first demoed it for me a few years ago, was uh, we we brought all the accounts back, um, but the drill down still works on on the expanded rows, right? So mm -hmm. even with the trial balance, when I'm trying to spot where I'm missing, where I'm out of balance, I can actually drill down to those numbers as well, even from this document, right? So if I wanted to drill down to cash operating, I could drill down into the, the any of those fields that populate it. I so the, will double check. I don't know if I set that up for this particular sheet, but it does but, but preserve you can. all of my formulas for sure. Yeah, right. Yep, absolutely. Okay. Well, great. Uh, so, all right. So, I know we're we're running up on the time. So, I want to let's let's bounce back into the PowerPoint. Let's see if we've got any quick questions we can address before we we lose the audience. I think we set this for forty five minutes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I think we did. So, I'll pop back over to that. Thank you. It is right. You got me all excited Here. about debits and quest, debits and credits, right? <laughs> So uh, is this the slide you want up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So one of the things, um, and if, if we have any questions that have popped up, um, Bobby, if you want us to, anything you see that you would want us to head on real quick. Uh, otherwise, um, you know, the most common questions that people are going to have is, um, you know, how much does it cost? How do I buy it? All those fun and exciting things. And that's where we, we sell and distribute and support our products through our reseller channels uh, and, and partners like uh, Bob with Positive Vision. So he's going to be able to help us support what you guys are doing. Um, so if there's any questions that, uh, that are out there, Bob, we can jump on those real quick or if we can. Um, there's one. Can you put the data back into the ERP, i.e., Doing a forecast in Excel and then putting that in the ERP system, such as you know, like a uh, forecasting. I, yeah. you load I can up. answer that in the, the in two ways, Pete, if you like, pretty quickly. Um, so, spreadsheet server itself is read only on purpose, so that you have all of your security. You don't have to worry about breaking anything or deleting anything or overwriting anything. However, almost every ERP um, has a method already, you know vetted and and um, you know documented that says if you create something with you know these rows and these columns like a budget or a forecast and you save it in a CSV or text or flat file format you can then upload that or import that into your ERP so it would be you know syspro sap um, expandable you know accountmate tons of different ERPs uh, you know multiple versions of sage multiple multiple versions of sage do that same exact thing so very easy to put things back in but that is very ERP format specific as opposed to spreadsheet server which is designed to read everything from lots of different ERPs and work in the same way regardless of which system you're talking to and some of the more common examples budgets a great example where we're able to return actuals and then massage the 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 budget built or the forecast built against those actuals and push them back in uh, but I've also seen clients um, Build some allocation models where they're 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 allocating across multiple companies different expenses, um, and they want to turn around and push those back into yeah. So both are pretty good examples. Okay, and that looks like the only question. Awesome. So we invite uh, the the guys that had an opportunity to attend to to reach out to to Bob and Positive Vision to ask additional questions that might have come up as you guys uh, leave and and think about what's happening or what we've showed today. Uh, and of course, uh, any questions related to pricing and, and all that fun, exciting things like, hey, how many licenses do I need? How does it cost? Um, please reach out to Bob and we'll certainly work with you guys to, to build a configuration that works for your organization. If it's one license, great. If it's 100 licenses, great. Everything in between. Thank you for that. Yeah. Well, thank you. Uh, this was very good. Um, Actually, I learned from it. No. Um, Good. Any uh, anything we didn't cover that you'd like us to include? Oh, installation typically an hour or less per user. Sorry, I forgot to mention that because it's so easy. 
really. Right. Yep. All right. Well, thank you guys. Um, uh, again, the session's been recorded. I know that um, it'll be available um, uh, for you guys to share with other people in the organization that may not have been able to attend. Um, or if you guys have um, a, a very specific need you're trying to address, uh, please reach out uh, to Bob and she, he, he can connect with Dara and help set up an individual demo if we need for your organization. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, thank you guys, uh, and we'll we'll end the session there. All right. Thanks, everyone. Thank Take care. Bye.